In nature, decay phenomenon can be found at every space and time scale. So what exactly is decay? The special thing about decay is that its cause is usually unknown, or it may be ambient in the environment, such that everything is connected to everything else, and we cannot pinpoint the cause locally. Of course, the understanding of decadence is inseparable from the second law of thermodynamics. When I first studied thermodynamics, I was deeply troubled by this paradox. How can we derive something that is time asymmetric from laws that are all time symmetric? The above reasoning is crystal clear. Which is why it drove me crazy. I failed thermodynamics twice in college and never passed it. There is however a famous argument that seems to resolve the paradox. It was first proposed by Paul Aaron Fest. Consider two containers with initial condition like this. Then, at each time step, randomly pick one of the balls, and switch its place from one container to the other. This probabilistic rule seems to be symmetric from either time directions. And, it can be proven mathematically, that after a large number of steps the containers will reach this equilibrium configuration. It follows from the binomial distribution. The probability of even a slight deviation to equilibrium would be 10 to the power blah blah blah. We have all heard of that argument, right? Aaron Fest argued that, an irreversible convergence to equilibrium seems to emerge from a time-symmetric probabilistic rule. That means, if we apply the rule to the initial condition, things will tend towards equilibrium. But if we apply the same rule to the final condition, things will remain in equilibrium rather than returning to the original configuration. Something is fishy. Less than a minute ago, I've just said that this should be impossible. In my opinion, the problem of the argument is that the time step is not really symmetric. It seems to require us to select a ball first, and then switch its position. A very subtle time asymmetry has slipped in. So we are forced to conclude that the second law cannot be proven from known laws. However, the second law is also the only law that can explain all the decay phenomena we listed in the beginning of this video. What's more, the second law is often believed to have implications for historical dynamics such as the rise and fall of empires. Even more perplexing, how come heat seems to be something real whereas entropy is subjective? What exactly is entropy? From Boltzmann's microscopic point of view, entropy is a subjective measure of uncertainty. From the thermodynamic point of view, entropy is a measure of the amount of energy changed into heat. These two formulas look different, yet they are describing the same thing. How can this be? Let's rewrite the formula this way. Now make the two sides equal. And move the Boltzmann constant k to the other side. Now we recognize that kt is just the average kinetic energy, which is a measure of the amount of heat energy already in the system. Let's use q to denote the total heat energy. We can see that this is a differential form. And now it is clear that omega and q are the same thing. In other words, we can calculate the total heat energy by counting microscopic energy levels. The left hand side is the number of states unknown to an observer. The right hand side is what we consider to be heat. This just confirms our suspicion that heat is a subjective concept. When macroscopic motion turns into heat, we lose track of some information. The second law maintains that ambient heat cannot be transformed back to useful energy. However, as we have seen earlier, the second law cannot be proven from microscopic interpretations. All we know is that empirically we have never observed ambient heat being turned into useful work. And this of course would be the job for the famous Maxwell's demon. My take is that it might be possible to create Maxwell's demon. At least, the physics theory has not yet told us that it is impossible. 
One last thing I want to mention is reversible computing. I know very little about this area, but I believe it may hold the key to creating Maxwell's demon. The laws of quantum mechanics are time reversible, and therefore quantum computing steps are often reversible too. In 1982, the computer scientist Charles Bennett argued that Maxwell's demon is impossible because, in order to destroy information, one needs to use energy to do work and thus increases entropy. From our analysis before, it seems that this is a circular argument. In conclusion, it seems that the second law has been greatly misunderstood, and it is perhaps really irrelevant to the arrow of time and the rise and fall of empires. I remain hopeful that the second law could be broken someday. Let me end with one of my favorite movie quotes. The living should never be used to serve the purposes of the dead, but the dead should, if possible, serve the purposes of the living. From one of Philip K. Dick's stories. I don't know what it means, but it sounds interesting.